Hey guys, how's it going? Today's project theme is mixed bag. We've just got a random assortment of things that I would like to get done today. Uh, starting off with these early bird white columbine. I want to get these in the ground and we're going to be doing that right here. I think a little touch of white spring flowers would be perfect. And then we've got a hardy geranium called ballerina. It's a very short growing. I think it's like six inches tall by like 10 to 12 inches wide. Almost kind of a ground cover type a geranium to put in the ground. These are gonna go out into the south garden. We've got a whole flat of Echinacea purpurea plant. These we started from seed. They struggled a bit because they had fungus gnats really, really bad. Anyway, they don't anymore, uh, but they are ready to be put out in the garden. And I think they will explode once we get them out there. We've got all of our sweet peas right here, which I've been hardening these two off for a while. They've been sitting out on a cart outside the greenhouse for the last several days. I wheeled them in at night for like the first night or two and then they've stayed out for a couple of nights so they should be good to go and then i thought i would show you the winter sowing jugs that are ready to be planted out so we are going to tackle just these six today i love random project days because it just allows you to move around the garden a whole lot and just see a bunch of fun stuff now if you hear can you hear that cutting sound in the background I don't know if you can hear it from here. It seems loud to me, but Paul's working on cutting out the old basketball hoops today so that we can get the new ones installed. I'm so excited. But I imagine he's gonna be working on that for a little while, so it's just gonna be part of the project today. Now, the interesting thing about these is that I've got another Columbine right down the way that looks nothing like this one. And they're both unique and beautiful in their own way. So check this one out. Oh my gosh, this one is Pink Petticoat started these from seed last spring and i absolutely love this perennial i'm going to be starting more i love how tall the stems are i love the bicolor blooms here you know they start off a deep pink and end a creamy white and they're just so fluffy and the foliage is beautiful as well so both of these are spring to early summer bloomers uh, but the foliage usually hangs out it's not like bleeding hearts you know those come up bloom and then the foliage kind of shrivels up and goes away for the rest of the season. At least with the columbine, they still fill up the area where you've got them planted and the foliage is very delicate and soft looking. Yeah, isn't that wild? So that's just another version. Did I say this one's called early bird white? It grows about, about that tall and maybe just a little bushier than that. Let's grab the other two. Oh yeah, I think that's gonna be just perfect. In the same area, we've got the beautiful Emperor One Japanese maple. Uh, we've got some Aureola Hakanakloa. It's a Japanese forest grass. It's got that yellow variegation. We've got some Lamium here. There's some uh, Lamb's Ear, which doesn't go crazy in this area. In sunnier situations, it's very prolific and it very much so fills out its space. This one, it stays kind of petite and into itself because it just doesn't get as much sun here. And then we've also got our hedge of little lime punch hydrangeas. So we were just missing a little something right in here and I think this is perfect. So this'll be a, this'll be a quick job. We'll just get these in the ground and move on. Don't those look great right there? I love it. And you know, while we're up here, I've got one of these winter sewing jugs has silvery lupins in them, which grow about one to two feet tall. And I think they would look really pretty over here on the west side, either in this flower bed or the one across the way by the urn somewhere. But let's open it up and see what they look like. Oh, we've got a spinach plant in there too. Excellent. Ooh, a spinach plant that has aphids. This is going to the chickens. Hey girls. I know it's not a lot, I'll bring you more later. The lupins look good though. There's like seven or eight plants in here. I mean, I probably had more seeds than that because this whole side looks like it didn't come up, but I'm happy with that. So what I normally do is you can just kind of scoop them out. Ooh. And then I try to, as gently as possible, separate them trying to leave some soil on each one of their roots. Let's see how many plants we actually have in here. There was more going on underneath and I wonder, like if I kept it even longer in here, I wonder if more would emerge, it's possible. 
So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you're basically in it for the cost of the seed and a little bit of soil. I mean, these water jugs we use at the house and we're able to reuse them from year to year even. Uh, we'll just rinse this water jug out and it'll be good to go for next season. And for me, investing a lot of money in lupins is never a good idea because we're so high pH and lupins tend to like it more acidic that I, well, I like to keep trying. And maybe one of these days I'll find a location that they really, really like and they'll take root and they will thrive. But until then, I think just this amount of investment in, and time and all of that into them is just about perfect. Okay, I'm gonna kind of line them back up in here and take them to their new location. Okay, so there's our little grouping of lupins. You kind of have to get close to see them, but they look really sweet tucked in this little spot right here. All of this foliage is from daffodils and of course tulips. So all of that will kind of fizzle up and go away. We do have some Midnight Masquerade at Penst Penstemon. <laughs> I don't know why I want to call it Penicetum. I interchange those two. And we've got Amsonia, there's a nine bark in here, some daisies, yarrow. I think it'll be a really pretty look. And this corner tends to hold on to a little bit more moisture, which I think might benefit the lupins. And they'll get a little reprieve from the hot afternoon sun. They'll get a good block of morning sun. So I don't know, we'll try it. I haven't tried lupins in this spot yet, so it's worth a shot. Now I wanna head out and get the geraniums planted. Got the geraniums in and the shades of summer verbascum and my goodness were there a ton of plants they're not super happy with me having separated them but I just got them watered in and they're pretty tough little plants so the dress starts right over here and it just works its way through the tulips it'll fill in right behind the sedum and then go right in front of the blue spruce which I'm just gonna monitor this this blue spruce only gets two feet tall and it spreads out I may need to move these little plants right in here, but we'll see how it goes. Tell you one thing though, I love this geranium in front of the sedum. The name of this particular sedum evades me at the moment, but it does get a lot taller than the geranium and having the different color leaves contrast one another, I think is really pretty and geraniums are just so dang tough. I love to have them around the garden. In fact, if I could get my hands on more of this particular variety, I'd love to fill in this little space right here and just have this nice big drift. Or at the very least, one more here and one more right there. So I kind of have like a tapered end to my drift instead of kind of an abrupt end. We are making a pretty good dent on our plant pile. I think I'd like to get the echinacea planted next in the area over on the other side.
Well, we ended up with 46 echinacea plants in this area right here. It's going to be so pretty. I love echinacea because they start blooming, you know, midsummer and then go all the way through the season and you don't have to deadhead them. You don't have to fuss with them. They just almost always look really, really nice. And planting in those paper pots is such a pleasure because they just separate so easily. You don't have to get them out of cell packs or anything like that. So you just pop them apart, put them in the ground and plant them paper pot and all. So we've got one big drift and one smaller drift. We've got 41 echinacea plants right in here. I probably could have spaced them out a little bit further, but I'm impatient. I want them to be tight and full from the gate pretty much. So it's kind of a lazy drift. It starts here and then it kind of broadens out, comes in front of this as a chokeberry, I think, plant, and then uh, kind of back in this way. And then there's five more right behind the iris here, which we transplanted from another area of the garden. So I think it'll be pretty to have that early season color, the grassy texture, and then right behind it have a different texture of foliage and later flowers. So we'll have a nice kind of staggered look right here. I think I'm gonna have to go grab the Ely hose reel to get these watered in because the nearest hose link is in the center island there. And we fashioned a bracket for it that needs to be repaired. So we don't have any actual hose hooked up right there, but we do have access right here right there so handy and no spiders yet i don't think spider webs later in the season it's almost a guarantee that every time you open an irrigation box there's going to be a black widow in it angel white lilac gorgeous There's the hose reel, and I ran out of biotone, so I gotta grab some of this anyway. I think the rest of our planting is gonna take place in the cut flower garden. So here in the cut flower garden, I have these two rows where I've used T-post and ranch panels, and we have grown sweet peas on them the last few years. My intention this spring was to have a waist high raised bed built the entire length. So we would have removed these two rows and built that raised bed about three feet wide and waist high so we could grow strawberries in it, but we're just not quite ready yet. And our strawberry row is still going strong right here. So I figured let's let the strawberries go. Let's utilize these while they're still here. We're gonna grow the sweet peas on the front panel here, and then we can utilize this one for something else later on. Maybe um, like some pole beans or maybe sunflowers. I don't know, anything that we could maybe use as a support for a taller crop or something that needs to climb. I think that'll work out perfect. We just got our potatoes planted. We're getting there. I will be amending with the Biotone Starter Fertilizer, Land and Sea. I'm gonna use my uh, three inch auger to dig all of my holes, but we've got all the sweet peas minus this one pot because I had some extra seeds, but we have them all planted in these root trainers, which are wonderful because sweet peas are deep rooted. And so you can just take these out of the tray and you pop open the whole cell pack and then you can just take the, the whole plant with the root ball out without messing with it too much and also you know giving it a chance to grow all the way look look at this root all the way down here there's a little centipede rolling around in there and this is far less than we normally plant of sweet peas so i don't even know if we're going to use the whole row we'll see i usually have about 10 or 12 of these uh, root trainer trays to plant out so this should go pretty quick quicker than it usually goes during this process every year
sweet peas are in and we had exactly the right amount of plants to make the entire row. Hardly ever works out like that. I actually started planting on the other end, but the varieties down here, I've got one little section of kind of unknown. I dropped some of the seed, and so I think it's just a mixture of what I've got going on. Uh, the rest of the row here, so there's just a small section of that. And then right here where you see the white tag, that's the start of the section called Old Times, which is just a blend of pastel colors and probably the most fragrant sweet pea I've ever grown. And that goes all the way to the next white tag, which is right in here. And we've got Blue Ripple, which is a very pretty kind of purple. And then the last variety, there's only three varieties. Uh, Spencer ice cream, which is a pure white. I usually have a mixture of, you know, red and bright pink and purple and all these that I have here, but I think it's going to be really pretty just to have a, a whole row of very soft colors. And the last thing we have are three more, I think three more, of our water jugs. Four more. But this one labeled Pacific Giant Delphinium. I think all I have in there is one spinach plant. I must have dropped some spinach seed around these containers at some point. <laughs> yep, one spinach plant, that's it. But in this one we have the poached egg plant, and let's open these other two. This is the Delft Blue Nigella. Oh yeah, those look great. And then these are the Albion Green Pod Nigella. And another spinach plant. <laughs> but these look great. These I'm going to put in the annual section of our cut flower garden and this I think I'm just going to tuck these in a border somewhere. Okay, so I decided not to plant the flowers out in the cut flower garden uh, because I need to work on the spacing in the rows, specifically in the annual section, because I've always had a row too close to the grass and so all the plants eventually flop over the, onto the grass and they block the sprinklers and we end up with dry patches and all of that business. So I really need to spend some time measuring, figuring out where I want the rows to be before I start planting more stuff. So I'm just going to tuck these in, I think, over here on the west side because I think they'll be really sweet over here. And the poached eggplant, because it blooms yellow and I'm trying to stick to more, you know, greens and purples, pinks over here, I think I'm going to tuck some of these in to some spots in the raised beds where there's some space, like, you know, around the peas and things like that. Perfect. There's our poached eggplant. Decided to plant them in with our other random assortment of flowers that have come up. The bachelor's buttons, there's some anemones from Neculus, and now our poached eggplant. Okay, let's do the Del- this is the Delft Blue. Yes, Delft Blue first. The roots. So the Delft Blue Nigella ended up right in this area. There's a few right in here, and then I popped just three right back in here, and I think that'll be a really pretty ferny texture with a pretty blue bloom mixed in with all of the pink, really, because I've got pink roses. These are the Royal Jubilee, and then I've got pink salvia, Lady's Mantle, which is the chartreuse green. So I think it'll be a really pretty addition in here. And then I've got Stokes Asters in here, but they don't bloom till later in the season. And then down the way, I did a drift of the Albion Green Pod, all of them in the same location. And I did not take the time to separate each individual plant. They were so intertwined, like those I could have probably planted out a while ago, that I thought, you know, I'm gonna put three or four of little plants in one bunch here. And then, you know, if a couple of them don't like the transplant, at least we'll still have something left. And you guys, that is gonna be it for today's projects. What a random assortment, but so much fun. I loved it. And I hope you guys enjoyed it too. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.